Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 1st, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free. You can pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question and inside our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices in the green. A, uh, Dow down 850 points, S&P 108, NASDAQ 100, 270, Russell 76. Russell is down 6%, nearly 7% out there. That's the big loser to the downside. Trannies are off 5%. That's 400 points to the downside. We'll take a look at the indices so you can see exactly did I say uh, green? Yeah, I meant red. Sorry. If I said green, I meant red. Maybe I was just wishful thinking out there. Now, the things that are green, if you want to. So what, what's going on is Stevie looks at the uh, screens out here. What I see is the liquidation event is back. It has begun again. Now, why would Stevie say that? Well, I'd say that because, look, uh, there's, no, there's no move to gold. There's no move to silver. There's no move to the U.S. indices. There's no move to the international indices out here. The only real move out here of significance is to the U.S. dollar and to Treasury bonds. Yeah, the U.S. dollar and Treasury bonds, really one and the same out there. And so you've got the uh, you've got the liquidation event that is continuing. Now, the question is going to be, will that liquidation event find support? And so that becomes then is the question is, well, where are the key levels of support? So let me switch to a, a set of uh, charts out here. Let me just uh, move to a different workspace. Let's just take this one one thing at a time, one point at a time out here. Uh, let's start with the S&P 500. So what do we know about the S&P 500? Well, one, it formed a nice bottom, Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. Once price got above Stevie's red line, the oscillator and change line out there, that suggested, okay, uh, that at least the, the, the trend had changed. Now, the line is red, and that's really important. I have a green, it changed from green to red out here. If you go up towards the highs, you'll see it's green out there. And uh, so where price is likely headed back to, Maybe find some other support. We can look at intraday charts, things like that. But right now, on a daily basis, the level to be watching is in that 2431-ish area. Look, as price continues to push lower, that red line value will move lower as well. But it's in that 2431 level. If we see price trading below that, then what that means is that we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And in essence, uh, generally speaking, there's nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. So we know we have support where we found the most recent bottom. If price trades below there, maybe it's some form of retracement from top to from bottom to top out there. Always a possibility. But as long as price, it's not there yet. If price closes below that level, and I'm not referring to whether it's today or tomorrow, just simply if it closes below that level, you should anticipate lower price. And you should anticipate we're likely headed back to the lows or even lower out there. So 24, 30-ish area is going to be really key in watching the S&P 500. 
daily time frame for the Dow. Same same set of tools, formed a nice bottom, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Its price target may be its red line level and around the 2497, 2498-ish range as we speak right now. So that's a level that you will want to keep an eye on. If we go take a look at the NDX 100, the level at the NDX 100 may be targeting Stevie's red line, 7421, give or take. Again, in each of these, any close below that red line, that could spell some trouble, trouble meaning that we're headed much lower back to those lows. Now, the Russell 2000, which has been the weak link today, down 6%, 7%. Um, if we take a look at it, it still has same kind of bottom, really two bottom patterns out here, TD nine count bottom, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, and the uh, Stevie's red line is in the 1055 level. So still nothing broken, so to speak, out here. But if the Russell were to close below that, again, the same routine, back to the lows or lower out there. So as long as price remains above Stevie's red line, it still has a chance to find some support. And in a springboard mechanism, maybe it's need to be equal CD to the upside. Uh, but but even if we see that, folks, I believe, based on the signals that I'm seeing out here, we're going to see lower lows in the weeks ahead. Weeks ahead. Now, that might not be next week out here. It could be this weekend, next week. Uh, we'll just simply have to watch those red line values. Those folks out there that uh, may have uh, told you or shared with you that there's a V bottom, they couldn't be more wrong. And I say that with absolute conviction. Not like a little conviction, not like slight conviction, not like just maybe or what have you, dead effing wrong. Ain't going to happen. Now, if there is some kind of huge rally today and then tomorrow, and when I mean huge, something like we haven't seen in uh, quite a while, well, then that's a different uh, uh, element. But I seriously doubt that that's what we are going to see. If we take a look at the transports, they're down big. They also have a bottom. They've got that Chapman wave number seven, that seventh inning stretch, Rhodes momentum indicator, bottom, a TD nine count. So really solid out there. And still has the potential for maybe to form an A to B equals CD to the upside. But the key is uh, where price may be targeting right now is a 7138 level. 7138. It can stop before that. We'd have to, again, we've got to look at the intraday signals and so forth. But right now, just giving you sort of the, I won't even call it the big picture. I will give you the big picture. I want to go, I don't want to sound like I'm a Debbie Downer. We got to come up with a Stevie Downer. I just can't figure out what that would be, and this is because I'm not. Just really, just calling it like it is. Just how we see it. And all I'm doing is narrating the charts for you. Now I don't know why. What the heck has happened here? Why am I losing? I don't want to leave this thing right in the middle. Okay, we'll just get that. Uh, the socks. Um, I can't figure out what that level is. What did I do? Oh, that, that was a problem. Okay, maybe try to bring the socks over here again and do it. The semiconductor index. Uh, again, nice bottoming patterns, maybe targeting Stevie's red line around the 1421 area. So that would be a level to be watching. Again, all those red line levels, if we see price close and blow them, it spells curtains. Now, there's not any chart that I can pull out here. doesn't matter whether it's the Wilshire 5000. We should look at that or the New York Stock Exchange. Again, still all above those areas. You can see the daily bottom patterns that are out there. 24,294 in the Wilshire 5000 would become its target. So we come back from this breakout here. I do have one question that has come in from uh, John in Sarasota. He wants to take a look at silver. We'll do that. I think we want to look at the international markets, the U.S. markets, because I won't be Stevie Downer. Because long term, money will flow into the U.S. Absolutely. U.S. markets have held up the best. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, John in Sarasota want to take a look at uh, silver out here. And his question is, is this going to go higher? So uh, let's take a look at the two right-hand panels of my screen out here, John. The uh, very right-hand panel is the weekly time frame. And what you'll notice on the weekly time frame, where you should notice, is that there's a new profile that formed. And that profile formed above price. So it's telling you about a big overhang supply line at the price point of 1532. So if it does go higher, what I want you to know is that's a real significant level of, of resistance out here. And when price, when, when a new profile forms and it's above price, it's a bearish message out here. So the longer term picture, the weekly time frame, has a bearish message associated with it. The daily time frame has a different message right now. Price is trading above the top of its profile. You only see two lines out there. That's because the center of the box and the bottom of the box are the same at 1218. As long as price continues to trade above 1382, then the answer is yes, price may continue higher, can continue higher, should continue higher, but higher to where? 1532 out there. So you'll have to take a look at that from a risk reward standpoint. If we look at my other daily time frame chart here for silver, what we'll also notice, now you were asking about the SLV, but John, I really needed to look at the silver contract for you in order for you to be able to have the proper interpretation out here. We can take a look at my daily time frame and also see that silver is trading above my red line level of 1364 five out there. So that would be on a pullback. That would be your ultimate level of support. The line is red and says if price were to close below that, then the um, uh, then then you should see silver go back and test the bottom of that profile in the 1218 area. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, Michael writes in and is asking the question, you know, what signal do we need to see to go short? out here. And Michael, I would say that the uh, best signal to go short, and I don't know what indice it is you're looking at, so I'm just thinking you're you're thinking generally speaking out here. And I, I and and I'm assuming that you're not talking about a short term 
type of a, a signal, but something more on the daily swingish type, um, swingish type of value out here. So let's just go back and pull open the. Let's pull open the NDX 100, right? Since that's the strong dog out here, or potentially strong dog out here, let's go take a look at it. Well, why didn't it change over? Um, there we go. So if we're just using our daily time frame charts to make that call here inside the NDX 100, let's pull that out. Michael, I would need to see a close below Stevie's red line. That is support. The reason it is support is we have valid bottoms out here. You want to, I mean, when I say we've got valid bottoming patterns and signals out here, roads momentum indicator signals, so those are the ones that really make the best. That's the ultimate uh, topping and bottoming signal out here. It's the one pattern that you absolutely, if you're going to, if somebody came to me and said, hey, you know, I know you've got this plethora of information out here. If there was just one thing you know, if, if, if we were riding on the on the range, so to speak, and uh, Curly was out there and I was playing the part of Curly, uh, you know, and just just trying to tell Billy Crystal just the one thing or the one pattern out there, it'd be the Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern. Not because I, I didn't name it after myself, but then I did. I had to come up with something out here. It's the absolute single best pattern that works on all time frames, all instruments out there, and helps you to identify potential tops and potential bottoms out there. It would absolutely be that. So I, I teach that to folks. So, you know, go go subscribe to Mastering Properly. Go watch the archive video. But back to Michael's question here. Back to Michael's question. Um, actually, in, in answering Michael's question, I'm going to switch over to something else. I'm going to pull this up on the screen just so you can just so you can see, because I've automated all these tools, or many of them, not all of them. I'd, I'd like to automate them all, but not the easiest thing to do. If I pull this over here just to give you a feel, this, Michael, is the the top portion of the equity futures. The bottom, or the after that, you've got the cash indices. Then you got the index ETFs. Then you got the sectors in the S and P 500. Then you've got the Dow 30 stocks. And we take a look at the daily signals. Look at all the bottom confirmed signals that are out here. Look at all them. Now you can see here if you if you're just taking a snapshot of this, you'll have the support levels. Those are in the column here labeled daily OUL. So you really need to see, since we have those confirmed bottoming signals out here, what you and I don't know is whether this is just a retracement back to support. The reason that I developed the, the Stevie's green line, Stevie's red line, the oscillator and change line, is because I needed to answer the question, is this just a retracement back to support or is this something more dire? And, and honestly, without a topping pattern that we have in place right now in a daily time frame, and we go look at where some resistance is without a daily price right now, Michael, is is just pulling back to support. Now, unless you know. Because I don't know or somebody else knows out there whether in the S or the NDX 100, whether 7422 is going to hold or not. You could take the early signal now. I, I, I can't suggest that. I can't suggest because right now, if you took a short trade in the NDX 100 at 75.48, you'd need to be ready to cover that around that 74.22 area. And I'm not that that's a horrible reward to risk. I don't even have to do the math in my mind. I could just look at it and say, that's not a good reward to risk scenario for you. Uh, I'd rather it get below that and say, OK, we're headed back to the lows or or below that level. And if price were to close back above Stevie's red line, you'd go ahead and exit that uh, trade out there. So, uh, you know, other than short term time frame signals, that's what I would see that you would need to, uh, to, you know, to, to really to get you short because of all of the bottoming patterns out there. And we just don't know. And, and part of the just don't know is like I recognize you recognize the Fed until they really are out here buying equities. They're trying to buy equities through a serendipitous uh, method, if you will. Um, but there's still, you got to be careful about, uh, truly about fighting the Fed. Uh, much easier to fight the Fed when you know that support has failed. Um, other, now look, uh, that's, and, and the reason why I believe at this stage here, at least at 125 in the afternoon, that prices are likely headed back to the oscillator and change lines. We should anticipate that is because right now we have all of the futures contracts trading below the top of their daily profiles. That's what this screen is showing us. The top of the boxes, the center of the boxes, the bottom of the boxes. Now, here is the real here's the here would be the real savior to the upside. When you look at these three charts, four charts out here, 
which one is the strongest? What's the, which one is the strongest right now with regard to dealing with sellers? Exactly. It's the Dow. That's the real important thing out here. And we have to watch the Dow, Dow Equity Futures contract, like a hawk to really get our signals out here. Yeah, I know the NASDAQ is the strongest. So the what? So the blank what? Yeah, okay, it's the strongest. Is it going to lift everything? Well, uh, no, it's not. But the Dow, the Dow, the trophy horse, the trophy horse of everybody worldwide out here right now, the Dow, the Dow equity futures contract closes today above 21,047. Man, it's still bullish because it will have held a key level of support. It used to be resistance. Now it is support. 21,047. You can write that number down on a pad of paper. That is not changing. Watch the Dow Equity Futures contract. If it closes above that, hmm, very interesting, as Artie Johnson used to say. It's more than interesting. It's important. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to one of the seven wonders of the world. Let's go talk to Mike in Niagara Falls. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing? Hey, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, my my pleasure. Uh, are you a longtime resident of the Niagara Falls area? No, I'm staying in an Airbnb. Ah, okay, okay. Boy, the uh, yeah. Niagara I Falls sold the, I, I sold my home in Toronto. You see, so I can't. Uh, uh, 
Airbnbs in Toronto are, are very expensive, so I come down to, the, you know, one of the seven wonders of the world, you see, to Absolutely. see what it's like here. Absolutely. Uh, one thing, uh, so uh, I, growing up in Detroit, we went to Niagara Falls often and, and so forth. But I have been through, I used to do business with the uh, group that owned uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, and the uh, Wax Museum. I can't remember the name now. And yeah. uh, they were they were headquartered up there in Niagara Falls. So I used to travel up there fairly often, even when I was living in Florida. And I've been up there a couple of times in the wintertime when the falls right. have uh, been actually frozen. And right. I mean, it's it's awesome. amazing. Yeah. What's There's that? a light show at night. There's a light show at night um, during the winter when they have the, the falls frozen. Yeah. Oh wow, wow! I didn't, didn't I didn't stick around for that. <laughs> I was yeah. in. I, I, I go a lot. Like I, I have a, like an active mailbox on the American side, right? So I buy stuff on eBay and I yeah. drive down to the border and then I pay a dollar to cross the Rainbow Bridge and then I walk okay. on on the American side, which resembles Detroit, and I just go and pick up my stuff and then come back and that's it. Oh, that's great. That's great. So let's take a look at the uh, symbol you wanted to talk about, because I know we got another caller yeah. on the line. D DKL, uh, which is uh, Delic Logistics uh, Partners. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So tell me what you're doing, how I can help you out here. Well, uh, I'm currently long. I'm looking to double down. And double down. Uh, okay. just wondering, uh, uh, what's your gut, of feel, what, your gut opinion on this? Um, it's oil, okay? It's mostly logistics, so it's pipeline and uh, tankers and... Uh, Stuff like that. It's uh, not actually exploration or production. Okay. So here's here's what I would share with you. Here's what the charts are communicating to you. Form mm -hmm. a nice bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. Back there, it looks like on the 18th, that bottom was uh, TD nine count bottom, Rose momentum indicator bottom, because the following day had that nice bullish engulfing. Can, uh, price mm -hmm. is above my red line level of 586. If price were below that, it's headed lower out here. The potential okay. on the daily side for this to move higher, uh, and maybe the reason why you'd want to double down to be 2204. That's that's its resistance level. That would be one of its targets. Now. Uh, what I want to also share with you is the current profile levels, because those are really worth watching. And if you were to see a close below 825, as an example, that is the bottom of its daily profile. Uh, and the center line is also at 825. So the center of a box, center of a profile, Mike, we have both buyers and sellers. The bottom of the box, we have buyers. So in this case here, where we've got buyers lined up right at the bottom, of the box along with the, the center and the bottom right at the same level. If you see a close below 825, that could spell trouble for you. Now, okay. I want to take the 825 level and adjust it down just slightly because this week, a brand new weekly profile formed. And on the brand new weekly profile, the bottom and the center are also the same. This is actually, Mike, the very first time I've ever seen this, where I pulled up a chart and the daily center of the box and the weekly center of the box are both sitting down at that bottom. That level is 811. So I would adjust that figure from 825 down to 811. A close below 825, you should expect 811 to get tagged. But I would have to say if price closed below 811, the buyers are telling you they were not able to support that level. And then you're going to have to make a decision from there. And to me, okay, it's, this you think is, it would be a free fall with a retest of the lows? A retest of the lows, for sure, I, I would say would be the likely outcome. Mm -hmm. um, but, boy, what it's really telling you, this is the most important message, is that a close below 811 is that the buyers were not able to – They they. It, you know, it would be like being your 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 first first and goal on the one yard line. Yeah. You know, and you can't get it in after four downs. You know, pretty defeating. Sounds like the Detroit Lions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty defeating out there. That's why. That's why. I, that's why I have a new team, the Miami Dolphins. Oh my God, really? The Dolphins. So I, yeah. Well, because I live in I live in South Florida, uh -huh. so I, I just go from uh, one. I thought I was going to meet uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, so you know, he hey, was look. picked 109th overall in the 2000 uh, draft pick, sixth yeah. round. Yeah, well, good, yeah, obviously, great play. Anyways, we've got a bunch of callers on the line, Mike. So I want, I'm going to go to them. But 811 Thank is number one for watching. You bet, you bet. Uh, let's go to our next caller. Uh, let me see. I think that's Ray in Sarasota. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Excellent. Uh, can you tell me the symbol that you want to take a look at? Uh, I've got two today. The first one is uh, NAT. Yeah. All right. Let's stick with NAT, North uh, Nordic American Tankers. Uh, nice move off of the uh, bottom. What are you doing with it? What? How can I help you there? Well, I have a very substantial position in it, and 
I'm seeing it going up to close to six bucks, and then maybe ultimately up to eight dollars. Eight in the last. I, I'm really more of a technical than a fundamental person, but in the last two weeks, they've doubled their dividend to fourteen cents a quarter. Uh, they bought the insiders bought over a half a million shares in the open market, okay. and I think there's at least a fifty-six cent dividend for this year on this stock. Okay, so uh, so you've given us a little bit. Uh, you've given us a little bit of the uh, of of your of your take on that and some of the fundamentals. Uh, you mentioned you're a technical trader, so let me give you the technical issues you're dealing with here, and that's resistance. And you've got substantial resistance at 456. Now 456, four dollars and fifty six cents, uh, is the uh, monthly top of its profile. And last month, you know, price got over it for a little bit, but it closed back below that level. So even though you've got this six dollar ish target out there, you're going to need to see price close above 456. Now Tom has a beautiful expression: if he can't bust them up, it'll try to bust them down. So I'm going to say be careful out here, okay, because price has not cleared that key resistance level. Now, it's not just the daily time frame that's got or the monthly time frame that's got resistance. You and I can bring this back to the daily time frame. If you're going to ask me what's the resistance level, you know, I don't know if you believe in, in coincidences, but it's 456. It is not a level that I wrote in here. That is the area on the daily time frame chart where Nordic American tankers broke down. And two days ago, price got over that level. And it was looks like a wide-ranging bar. Maybe there was even volume behind it. But yesterday, price closed back below that. That's what I like to call a one-hit wonder out here. And today, you saw intraday price tried to get above it. It's trading back below that. Be careful. What this is telling you right now, the daily time frame chart is telling you that Nordic American tankers, unless it can close above 456 two days in a row, it wants to pull back to my green line level, which right now is printed out at 357. That will change as price moves higher, lower, so forth, sideways during the days out there. But more likely than not, you're going to see a pullback inside of Nordic American tankers before you see this thing make its next attempt to move higher. It's already tried it, and it failed. Right. It had. It was on the one-yard line, and it failed. All I can do is just really read the charts, and that's what it's telling you. That's what it's telling me. Okay. Yep. Okay. I got a second one for you, Steve. Uh, Go ahead. Yamana Gold, AUI. Sure. So we'll take a look at that real quickly out here. See what we can see on Yamana Gold. And here you are what? Long, short? I'm long. I'm long. You're long. Yeah. So you need this thing to close above 291. 291, Stevie's red line. If it doesn't do that, it wants to continue to move lower, and that's looking at the daily time frame. So watch that 291 level, all right? All right, thanks for your help. Have a good you one. Bet. You bet, have a great day. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We got another caller on the line. We're gonna go talk to Brent in Martinez, California. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. I uh, wanted to pass along some information uh, about the amount of gold, uh, our last caller out there. Uh, watch the, the, the next level of support. So I price was trading below Stevie's red line out there. That's the reason why I said be careful. But uh, I was able to pull up the daily profile out here. So watch 266. 266 is your go, no go line out there. But what the way the price is behaving, uh, when we took a look at the charts out here, it looks like that's where price is targeting, 266. Okay, we got that. Let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Steve. How about yourself? Doing, doing very well. Thanks uh, for asking. And I believe it's the gold contract that you want to take a look at. Yeah, I was hoping to just kind of revisit. Uh, I talked to you probably a week or so ago. I was more or less bearish on the just the fact it had gone up to that level around 1700 Yes. Been it done previous, tried a couple times to get above that, couldn't do it. Uh, was looking for, you know, some kind of a pullback, which it's been doing, and just wanted to get your thoughts on it at this point where we're at and, and looking for levels of support and such. Yeah, sure, sure. So what I did here, Brent, is the, the charts that we're looking at right now are my synthetic version, similar to but not the same as a continuous contract. And what's nice about this is that, uh, and, and here, so we've got historical data, 20 years worth of data here, uh, that really allows us to take a look at monthly, good, solid monthly and quarterly uh, profile levels. And uh, as it turns out, uh, today's the first day of April, beginning of a new month. And guess what? We have a brand new profile out here. Now, it formed this morning. Price is just trading slightly above the top of that level. That level, the top of that box is 1579.60. Now, I believe that price is going to be different when I go actually take a look at the gold contract here because of the way that I'm using this. So how am I, how am I going to be able to – so you're at 1593. So here's what I want you to do. So we know at 1593 – and I'm still going to come back here. So you're just going to do a little bit of, of, of multiplication. On this chart, it shows us at 1588. So the difference between 1588 and uh, 1579, what is that? That is, uh, what, uh, nine bucks out there? So take nine bucks from where we're trading right now. And if you were to see price close $9 lower than where we're at, um, that's going to suggest that we should be looking at lower price for gold. That's the way that I see it. And just looking at these profiles, is, do, do I need to walk you through that again? And I know it's kind of odd because of the different price than what the current contract is trading for. But but the purpose of me doing this was to try to see if there's some new information that's helpful to us to glean. No, that's clear enough, Steve. I, I think you know, just given the numbers that you presented, that's something that you know, it's fairly easy math. 
Okay, so about nine bucks from where we're trading now. If you see it close below that, that's that's not what you want to see out here. Price is below the top of its daily profile, 1593. It is trading below the top of its weekly profile, that's 1595. So if a brand new box and price begins trading below that. Just not a really great message out there for gold, suggesting that we'd see a further retracement. When I pull up the current contract, the June contract for gold out here, what we also know is 1599 is a key level. If price be continues to trade below that, that's my green line area, that tells us that price wants to pull back. Pull back to where? Well, 1564 would be a level, 1551 would be a level, 1507 would be a level, and then finally would be the 1471. So it's got to be taken kind of one level, one, one thing at a time. But I would say right now, when I look at the daily and the weekly time frame chart, um, they, they don't look good. Uh, with regard to price, so just suggesting that price wants to move lower, and I think that uh, final might come in, uh, you know, about nine bucks from where we're tra below where we're trading right now. That's what that's what I see when I take a look at the gold contract. The only other piece that I think is worthwhile for us to look at is to say, hey, how's gold trading in all of the major currencies out here? And as we take a look at that, what we're going to see is that uh, gold is about flattish in terms again. In terms, it's using my synthetic version of that contract, uh, a little bit higher in terms of euros, lower in yen, slightly higher in terms of pound. There's not a synergistic message that I see when I take a look at how gold is trading in all the major currencies out there. Uh, and then lastly, gold's in a range, and the range is very large. It's between 1493 and 1695. Those were both at support the uh, weekly horizontal trading range levels. Uh, at support is 1493, resistance 1695, which we know is a real significant uh, level out there. So it's very possible. It's the old uh, Tom O'Brien. If you can't bust it up, it's going to try busting it down. Okay, that's kind of getting to my what was going to be my next question. Are you kind of seeing this as more of a a very large consolidation between those two levels you just gave, or, or what's what's your thought on it? Yeah, I do at this stage. There's there's nothing here to suggest otherwise. Um, you know, and it, yeah, it's a it's a it's a definite consolidation ish type of uh, pattern out there. Not that price can't get a bit lower, uh, but just on a closing basis, that 1493 and that 1695 area is is really the range out here inside of gold. And if I yeah, go back, a pretty to nice that, big big trading range, I guess. Oh, gigantic trading range out there, and so uh, you know, pay attention to the short term patterns out here. Let me see if I can pull up. Oh, I, I know I can pull up uh, just on a short term basis here with regard to gold. Let's just go see what we can see out here. Short term, start with a 30 minute time frame. Let me get this populated. So on a 30 minute time frame, we saw a nice little bottom out here, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, and then when price pulled back, looks like this morning around noon, it found support at 1586.50. So to the extent that you're an intraday trader out there, and then, and then price went ahead and went back up to the recent highs out here. So the range, the potential range is 15 on a short-term basis, 1586 to 1624. But if price closes two bars below 1586.50, you go back to the lows of, uh, looks like yesterday or the day before. That's what the 30-minute time frame chart is telling us. The, oh, I just deleted the 60-minute. Didn't mean to do that. Let me get to a 240-minute chart out here for you. And here we've got prices trying to form a Rhodes momentum indicator topping or bottoming pattern out here. Um, and so it just says, watch the low of again because it was a nice little hammer candle out here. Watch the price level of 1576. If price closes below that, the two-hour chart is saying 1493 would be the target out there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Steve. I always appreciate your help, and thanks for the work on U.S. Steel as well. And Just uh, have a great day, and I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. You bet. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Um, so let's go see what I oh, Let me just check real quickly here, see if I've got any other requests that have come in by email. I don't see anything yet. Oh, we've got Ron in Denver. My apology. Ron, how are you doing? Thanks for holding. Appreciate that. And good morning, Steve. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. Tell me what you I want wanted to, to ask at. you about this one. APTV, it's a data collection company, really volatile. Obviously, came from ninety-nine bucks, twenty-nine, but it had a gap down this morning, and that signal is—is is that a buy signal there? 
Well, let's do this. We're about to go to the break. The ticker symbol here, folks. Uh, you can look at it at home. Uh, give your own opinion. Think about it. Think about what Stevie might uh, uh, suggest. The charts are communicating to Ron and I. Again, ticker symbol APTV and uh, trading out at 4596, uh, right at about the center of its daily profile. We'll be right back. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Ron in Denver, Colorado. We're looking at APTV. That's the uh, ticker symbol out here. And Ron, your question was, was today's gap to the downside a buying opportunity? Is that, is that yes, correct? Yes, that. About six o'clock this morning, it gapped down, and uh, I'm not—I don't know what you call it. And my chart shows a big green, you know, teardrop there. So, I don't—I don't. You got—you have names for them, eh? Well, so with regard to today's candle, the green—the green candles and red candles aren't don't represent whether it's bullish or bearish. It just represent where the open was and where the close okay. is. And so the green body is just telling you that the uh, the current price where it's trading is above the open. But yes, it was a gap to the downside, so a falling window or a gap. And that's typically a bearish signal out here. Um, even if you did take this as a buy opportunity, your resistance level is 54.67. And we clearly know that by looking at the daily time frame chart. 
Uh, March 26, that level actually price closed just slightly above it. That's the top of its daily profile. This profile is bearish in structure. And so right now, price is trading at the center of the box, 46.18 out here. Even if it is a buy opportunity, you've got to know that your risk reward, your risk or your reward is going to be about 54.67, the top of that daily profile that is clear resistance out here. Your risk has to be somewhere down around 33.46, the bottom of the uh, structure. Now, I can make the case that it's going to make another run for its highs out here. And the reason I can make that case is because price is trading just slightly above my red line level, 45.51. So this has a bullish bottom. Rhodesman, uh, it's got the TD9 count and a wave number seven pattern. So valid bottom. And as long as price continues to trade above 45.50 or thereabouts, uh, price may go ahead and make another run for that high. So it's not like I would be telling you to take to go short here. As I would, I would say it'd be, we could say to go short if price were to close below Stevie's red line. But right now it's above it. It's almost more neutral. Does that make any sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, hey, one thing time. I did this morning that uh, I think it worked out is I did a. I, uh, oh, I we're about to go the, off the air. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry, Ron. We're about to go off the air. Hey, thanks so much for calling. Everybody stay tuned for two more great hours of programming. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.